Well, hello and greetings. Happy Friday to you. It's me, Kev, and it's time for the Chief Chat. Come on in, have a seat, say hello. Let me know where you're, where you're at today, where you're tuning in from, where is home. What the hell is going on with my eyebrow? That's what I want to know. I smudged myself somehow. That's concerning. Panama, good to see you in Panama. Hi, Christy, good to see you from Austin, Texas. What's up? I know Mike Lucas is over there in Dallas, Texas. What's up, RC, Matt, Leon Ling, good to see you, Leon. One of our uh, new, newer and more active members. Great to see you taking lots of action inside uh, Copy Chief Leon. Hey, Rachel Kraft, great to see you. So this is kind of interesting, and let me, let me get over onto the, uh, the Facebook there. Um, this is, I think, gonna be the last uh, chief chat from the office here. Let's all take a moment to uh, say goodbye to our friends, the, the album covers. Um, yeah, I think, I know, man, right? It's, it, I, I still not sure how I feel about it. Here's the good news. So much great history in this office. I've been in this building for about five or six years now. It's incredibly convenient to where I live and there's so much good about it. However, I've been um, working from home a lot more and uh, I'm loving it, you know, even uh, and probably especially during quarantine, my teenagers are there, Michelle is there, obviously like everybody, we, we've been unable to do a lot of the normal life stuff, but it's been really kind of great just uh, being like super close and my kids are teenagers, so they, they want their space as much as we want ours. But we come together, um, uh, you know, every day for dinner and, uh, and we take walks and we play games and it's just been a blast. And it's given me a chance to um, assess, can I, can, can I work from home now? Because the reason I started renting, it was, I've been, this, this is an old house. This was so cool about this office. It's like an old 1900, 1905, somewhere, maybe 1920, the latest, this house was built. And that means it's got, it's, it's got a lot of charm and it's got a lot of rats, frankly. Um, but it's been, the landlords are great and it's been cool. So point being, the reason uh, I had to get an office, if you were from home, you know this, and you may be experiencing this in, in a whole new way now with, uh, with the lockdown, uh, is that my kids were, um, you know, young and uh, when I got this office and they don't understand when dad's in the room where sometimes fun things happen and now uh, no fun's allowed to <laughs> happen in that room because dad looks busy and like he's got to concentrate on something and, and, and you know, it was always like, hey, ooh, sh quiet, dad, dad, daddy's working. Um, you know, and I didn't want daddy's work to be like this negative thing. Anyway, so got the office, worked out for a long time. Now I'm back home and we've, uh, we, we moved into a, a, a newer home uh, just last year. It's got a little more space and Michelle, ver very, my wife, very reluctantly allowed me to take over the den as my office. She did not want to give that up to me <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, she wanted a proper den. And I think she probably didn't want me home. <laughs> Shockingly, uh, some people can get enough Kevin Rogers. You may find that, you may find that hard to believe. <laughs> I know I certainly can get enough Kevin Rogers uh, many days. But um, anyway, I think I'm going to just, I'm going to try the home office. And good news is uh, they don't plan to have anybody else move in to this or any of the other offices up here. In fact, he's kind of a he's thinking he's gonna make it like a co-work space himself. So if I need to come back six months down the road or something, maybe I can right, move right back in here. I'm gonna to get to leave a lot of my furniture here because it, it'll be useful to him and I don't have to lug it out. So anyway, uh, all things gotta end, we're moving on. And uh, it's good to see everybody and thanks for being here. So uh, let's jump in. First thing I wanna cover is the May training. This is gonna be exciting. We got another money skill coming at you. Uh, it's going to be on May 13th. And we're going to talk about uh, upsell offers. Upsell specifically in email. 
how to make an upsell offer in email and have, uh, if you don't mind my language, zero douche factor in, uh, in the upsell. Now, the reason I say that, I don't know a better way to describe it, but we've all seen the douche factor upsells, right? Where you buy something and you go, oh, this is going to be neat. Can't wait to get started. And it's like, well, hang on. Since you bought that, you might like this. And you're like, no, I'm good. Well, hang on. Since you've been, okay, no, I'm good. Well, hang. I mean, like, you know, I've seen literally like 12, 13 upsells. And it's just like, I mean, you immediately feel like, well, oh my God, this is not, you don't love me at all. You don't love me at all. You, really, I mean, you feel like you're being mugged. It's like, it's like, uh, I don't know what, like um, you fed a cat or something. And now all the little kittens are, standing in front on your porch meowing, you know, it's just, it's horrible. And so, uh, of course, being who you are, copy chief members and copywriters of integrity, working with clients who want you to match their voice of integrity, uh, uh, they, they want, I don't know, classy is the long, wrong word, appropriate upsells. There's a way to do these. Uh, the best person I know with email on this very planet we share right now is a man you may have heard of, be familiar with. His name is Chris Orzakowski. And I am thrilled to announce that uh, my co-trainer, my co-coach for the May 13th training will be this man right here, Mr. Chris Orzakowski. What's happening, brother? What's up, Kev? How's it going, man? Good. It's good to see you. Uh, Papa Chris, I guess we can officially call you now. We got Papa Kev <laughs> and Papa Chris. Congratulations again. I think it's the first time you've been on the Chief Chat since you became a father. And uh, yep. how, how's things going? Good, yeah. We're we're pushing through the delirium, you know, but it's uh it's good. He's uh, Blake, my son. He's sleeping, so um trying to squeeze everything in. I told you, you you learn to like work in naps. Like those, you know, forget Pomodoro or any of that bullshit. It's like nap cycles after a while, you know. Right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You you got that look of someone who's like, I used to actually get a full night's sleep, and that don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. And this is going to be, lo what's lovely about this is what I love, like, when, you know, as a, as, a, as a parent of a, my oldest kid, 16, when someone's a new parent, that's kind of the fun for us is we know you're now like making all these sacrifices and in these investments in this beautiful child who can do no wrong for you at this stage in his life. And then we got a couple of years down the road where they can do some wrong. And you're like, you little bastard, you have no idea what it's like to not sleep <laughs> you're like you yeah. got some respect back you have no idea what i went through <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll try to remind him of that yeah I remember. <laughs> uh so um anyway it's great you guys are i know uh having a blast with it and blake's just beautiful so thanks do it for doing this man when i know you really just want to sleep uh but you love training as much as i do man you're the king of email uh, Make It Rain Monthly is your, your brand new newsletter, dude, that I uh, never gotten a newsletter before where it comes in the mail and I'm just damn excited and I like put it aside and I like immediately, when's the time I'm going to, I usually have it in the, next morning, uh, I get my coffee and I sit on the front porch and I open it up and I tear through it and it's just fantastic, dude. Your writing is uh, the best I've ever seen it and you clearly have a lot, a lot to share. You know, some people I think create newsletters because it's like oh i bet you know i bet i could sell a newsletter you created a newsletter i know we worked together i was you know i'm, I'm your coach most people know and i i um saw your process of thinking very very hard about what needs to be in that newsletter and you have so much to cha share so much experience about um email and you can you can feel that in every um every issue it's packed with uh you know uh, what I would call like in the trenches, you know what I mean? Like hard won information. But what, I, what what's cool is it's not a fire hose. You're, you're focusing on one kind of email per issue. And that's what I love. It's like really gets me thinking of, man, I could use this even better in my own funnels. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the glowing endorsement. And yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I want to, you know, one thing I learned from being a teacher is like when you throw a bunch of stuff, like, at people, at kids or anyone really, it's like they have that drink from the fire hose effect. And I've I've created super long courses with tons of videos, and after a while, it's like this is not serving my people the best. So it's like one thing every single month, focus on it, and uh, 
that's why that's why I'm excited about this challenge too, because it is just so yeah. like hyper focused. Instead of just yeah. general email, it's like boom, right. like one super powerful um, thing that anyone can do, no matter what kind of business you have. So I'm pretty pumped about it. Exactly. So we we already know what the challenge is going to be, um, and I'll I'll just give you guys a heads up now that. So May 13th will be the challenge the following Monday. I mean, the training in the following Monday, the challenge will start. And we're going to ask you to write uh, what would we call like an order confirmation email and go crazy and be creative and have fun with it. If you've ever seen the CD baby, the famous CD baby email when somebody orders from them, it, it, it's the one that put this whole concept on the map, I think, right? They, they go through this big elaborate the whole team had a party and people were, you know, music broke out and there was a conga line and whatever else. And they're just super fun to, to write. And it's, it is just great to get an email like that. Again, just talking about what I was talking about before. It's like you buy something and then what's your experience right after that? You know, when somebody delivers to you what you bought and then celebrates you as a new customer, it makes you feel like you're the most important thing in their world. That's a really nice way to start a relationship. And I think again, as copywriters of integrity, it's something, we would love to do for a client. So the challenge is going to be that kind of order confirmation email, but with a, with a PS upsell. Because again, it's a perfect time if you have an appropriate offer to make right then. Well, we just know by nature, human nature, they just bought, they're hot on you, they're excited about what they got. If you got something really appropriate, damn good time to offer it to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I coined a name for it this week after we had talked, uh, and I call it the perfect first impression email. And um, because that's what it is, like, like, and I think I got that from, from what you were saying about like, you know, after, right after you buy, like what happens next, how do you feel? And I was like, that's what you need to happen. You need to make it the perfect first impression to where they yeah. get that, they go through that first time buying experience and they're like, holy shit, I love this company. I'm going to buy from them again and again and again because you know that's it's hard to get customers it's a lot easier to retain the ones and give those people an awesome experience and right. and going back to what you said about having a non-douchey upsell like yeah that's the thing like obviously we want to upsell it's good form it's good strategy but we want to do it in a way where people love the experience and love the process rather than they feel like you know you're sticking both hands into their pockets which is always an uncomfortable situation especially nowadays well, the Me Too, everything. We don't want to do that. We don't want to stick our hands in random people's pockets, right? So we want to do it in a super cool way and a totally comfortable way, a totally like, hey, we're going right. to welcome you into the family and help you with your goals and put you on our walls customer of the year. So, right. um, you know, I think, I think it'll be cool. And, you know, the cool thing, everyone listening, like as you're doing this, um, as you're doing this challenge, like, you know, even if you're struggling, like, you know, this is something I posted in the forum uh, this week, like I have, I don't know if it's a limiting belief about like being funny or kind of making things, um, you know, my, my marketing fun, like we'll help you with that. We have strategies and we're amassing techniques and like, we're going to help you through making this email fun and exciting and something that you can show off to clients, something you can write for clients yeah. uh, or write for your own business as well. Yeah, exactly. That's why we call it a money skill because again, it, it, just understanding a situation where that would be a benefit. And it's the thing you've seen, Chris, because you do so much testing with email, it does increase response. It, it does increase uh, loyalty, lifetime value, and, and creates a great opportunity for upsell. Because again, it's just a, it's a really nice way to be received as a customer. And like you said, uh, we've all had that experience, right? And, and, we, and as copywriters, we're always taking measures like, why am I so in love with this company and immediately want to buy more stuff? We even have some examples, you and I, about times we've been really let down where the, the marketing was so inspiring, fun, and then you get the product and it's like wrapped in the envelope and there's like not even a note. You're like, shit, well, this ends here. Like, that was it. Yeah, yeah. it's like, here's your product, asshole. You know, like, come back to whenever. You know, like, there's no, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's, yeah. Email is one of those things where it's just, you have the ability to kind of, you know, like everyone talks about brand building and brand building and like, you know, that sounds like this abstract concept, but like, what is that really? And like Jimmy parents still to this day, he gave me the best definition I ever, I've ever heard of this and maybe we'll post it on the training, but it's about every single touch point that you ever have with that company and how it makes you feel. And like email, like especially someone's buying from you, they're going to be getting that order confirmation. They're going to be getting future marketing emails, going to be getting shipping emails, or they're going to get 
other kinds of those transactions. Like there's going to be a lot of communication that way. So like, yeah. what if the very first email, that very first impression they got just in their mind, they automatically knew I like this company. You know, think about the next thousand emails you send that customer over their life. They're going to, there's going to be a much higher chance that yeah. more people are going to open that and respond to it positively. Cause, right. Cause that's the thing. Like, I don't know about you, Kev, but for me, sometimes like, I'll sign up for a list. And if I read the first few emails, I'm like, okay, I'm mentally subscribed. And this is a concept Russell Lachlan told me about the mental unsubscribe and the mental mm. subscribe. Like I'm tuned in, I'm, I'm paying attention. Some people, they, they don't capture you from the beginning and then you could be on the list for two years. You don't read any of their emails. So we yeah. want people engaged with this stuff. That's a, that's a really good point because, you know, let's consider, man, like a really good open rate on an email is, you know, 40% or mm -hmm. higher, depending on the size of your list. But average for, for larger lists is probably 20-ish in there. And you're like, all right, cool. But that's 80% of, your, of people who signed up or bought something who have, like Ross says, mentally unsubscribed. That's a bummer. So what can we do? And that first impression to have them mentally subscribed and keep them there, even if they don't read everything. So awesome, Chris. All right, man, I don't want to keep you, but you and I are working out the details of the actual training. We're in true fashion. We're like we're going to keep it super specific. So it's actionable, but it's also going to be meaty. And as always with all copy chief trainings, it's going to be based in proof. You're going to see numbers. You're going to see how these work, where exactly when they should be used. So again, as a, as a freelancer, you can go to your client and go, hey, you didn't even ask for this, but wouldn't it be cool if, and suddenly you're their new hero, right? That's what we look to do. So uh, appreciate it, Chris. Thank you, brother, for, for hopping on with me today. I'm excited to uh, jam, jam on this uh, training with you, and we'll see you again in May. Thanks a lot, Kev. Super excited for it. All right, brother. Thanks, man. All right, love, love that. Make it rain monthly. If you're not subscribed, if you like getting uh, hard mail, I love, I love getting it and sitting down, like I said, with my coffee and I, I just read it and it's, uh, man, he does, Chris will not waste a second of your time. He's got a lot to say and he, he's a teacher. Guy was a high school teacher three years ago. Can you believe it? Um, when Chris came into RFL, I've been loving telling this story because I've been, we're, uh, we're about to launch RFL 10 and I've been talking to lots of folks about it. And one of the things they'll ask is, well, you know, that the, the, cause I do the trainings live and then we have a, a Q and a call, um, every other week. So I'm, I'm there with you live like this, a uh, total of eight or nine times throughout. And the coaches, my co-coaches will also have calls and those times may be more flexible, but point being, they'll say, ah, you know, I'm not able to make the live training or the call. And I always say, well, a lot of people have been in that situation. The replay goes up the same day. Uh, and you'll still have the full amount of time to, you know, we, we leave plenty of time to get the work done, right? There's assignments with every module, uh, and you turn them in and your coach looks at them for you plenty. Nobody's ever fallen behind and not been able to keep up. But I always just talk about Chris because Chris, when he went through uh, real free life was uh, a full-time teacher in a high school. And then he, uh, coached wrestling after school and couldn't, wasn't on any of the live calls and still clearly uh, took the program to its fullest, was a superstar during the program, has been on a, a rocket ship uh, to the, the, the outer regions of, uh, of success in our, in our industry since RFL. And uh, so look no further. And if you're considering a Real Free Life, uh, I can tell you there's, we're, we're up to about 24 now uh, of the 30 spots. That includes the, the members of our accelerator program, which is uh, people who have gone through one of the programs before, either RFL previously or Escape Velocity. So we got about five, seven spots left in uh, RFL. We only launch these once per quarter. So the next one won't be till September if you missed this one. Um, if you feel like this is something you need, if you want to take this time right now, where things are different and shifting and uh, want to know how to truly crisis proof your business, how to uh, find your specialty, find your thing that's going to make you stand out and have uh, almost zero competition in this industry, have quality leads coming to you rather than you having to reach out. If you want to stop being at the mercy of what comes and control 
your world as a freelancer. That's what RFL does for you. It's very strategic. Uh, it's also very, uh, there's, a, there's a huge mindset aspect to it. And uh, it truly does transform people. Uh, it's my passion. It's my, it, I, I gave birth to this thing. It's pulled solely from my own experience, things I've done and things I've done horribly and would never want you to repeat, things I've done well, things I've helped other uh, freelancers I've been coaching for years do well. And it's the most proven system there is. There's nothing else like it. And people like Chris and Rachel Mazza and Melanie Warren and Angie Coley and uh, April Dykeman and everybody you see in the super group, um, uh, who, Russell Lachlan, anybody who's been through RFL, please reach out to them and ask them, hey, I know, I know it's Kev's job to say how great RFL is. What do you say? I had spoke to a lovely um, woman yesterday from New Zealand uh, who joined and um, she had already took it upon herself to reach out to three people she knew from the program before she even contacted me. She talked to Abby Woodcock. She talked to Sam Woods. She was going to talk to Cindy Childress. And I was thrilled. I said, I'm, uh, first of all, thank you for doing that. I appreciate you putting that kind of effort into deciding if this, if this uh, is for you or not, because it says a lot about your character, the way you operate. And nothing makes me more proud than when somebody goes behind my back to reach out to uh, the testimonials they see on my page to ask them directly, is this legit? Or is that something you said nice two years ago and now you think Kev's a jerk? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta do that work, you gotta find out. And it uh, makes me proud. So. RFL, it's uh, closing soon. You'll be hearing about it through next week. May 6th is the first class. I think May 1st is when we close the gates so we can get everybody settled. Uh, we've already got action going inside the private forums there. So our uh, man Jay, Jay Jackson is in there. I don't know if Jay's here today, but uh, a lot of cool people in there getting to know each other. Stacia Wood is here. Hi, Stacia. She is in RFL and uh, I'm really excited to start working with um, Stacia. So uh, Sherry, uh, as well. Good to see all you guys. Um, awesome. So, all right. Um, da, 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 da. What do I want to talk about? The, um, what else I want to show you real quick, some cool stuff. I want to make sure you know what's going on in the forums. Uh, I think, is it today? Is it today? Uh, we just wrapped up by the way. So, you know, we had the uh, training last month was all about how to crisis proof your business and what is the, what are the four steps you need to take? Um, and when I talk about crisis proofing, look, it's not just uncertain times. Uh, this should be crossed out said any times, any times, because as freelancers, it's not that we live crisis to crisis. That's certainly not the goal, but stuff happens. Stuff's gonna happen. Uh, clients are gonna cancel. Um, life events are going to happen to you, right? Uh, you know, you know how that goes. If you're a parent, if you're, if you have aging parents, if you know, any number of circumstances as a, as a, uh, a conscious caring human being could disrupt your day or your week. That's like a mini crisis of sorts when you have clients and you have deadlines. So this is about how to leverage your expertise so that, you know, the way you operate your business is not transactional. It's not, uh, you know, oh God, this, a, a new stranger has come into my life and is willing to pay the amount of money I requested. And now I have to meet their deadline. Well, when that's the whole relationship and something disrupts your life, guess how much they care uh, that that happened to you and um, that you're, you're going to have to miss the deadline. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when you're a specialist, one of the great things that happens is because you can become selective about your clientele because they're not hiring you on a transactional basis. They're hiring you as an expert, someone they are so glad that they found that has the experience to understand their business, their market, their needs, execute what they need done. Uh, that person, now it becomes not a transactional thing. It becomes a relationship. And, you know, um, it, it allows for a lot more fluidity when th uncertain things happen. Uh, you know, all the specialists I've talked to since coronavirus, 
have told me some sometimes sheepishly they're having the best months of their life this this year 2020 despite everything that's happened has been the best year of their life revenue wise client wise everything just keeps getting better and again it's not because coronavirus it's despite coronavirus this was the same thing i saw in 2008 uh, when the global financial crisis hit and every night on the news, it was a, it was a horror show of, uh, you know, of home foreclosures and terrible news and, and fear and panic and consternation everywhere. I d things just kept getting better in my business because I was a launch specialist and people were still launching products and it kept needing copy. So I kept staying booked and I kept working and I kept raising my fees and I kept it just didn't affect me. And uh, by the way, I talked to Jeff Kimes last week. We'll release that as a podcast Tuesday. I loved, I loved how he put it. And he said, I almost, it's weird. He said, uh, you know, I, I feel really, really bad for so many people in my life who are, who are devastated right now. He said, but I also feel very thankful that I've been insulated from the impact is how he put it. I've been insulated from the impact uh, of all this. And I thought, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Uh, so if that's not your career right now, and you've been doing this long enough to where you feel like that should be how your career is, uh, that's what this training is about. And we talk about how to specialize. Got some really great feedback on this training. So definitely recommend you take a minute or it, it's two hours, but the, the, the Q and A was rather long. So you watch this baby on 1.5 speed, you'll get through it in about, you know, 60 minutes, the heart of the training. And uh, definitely say that that hour is, is definitely worth your time. We also had the, um, you know what, I'll go, if you're in Copy Chief, by the way, and you're wondering, where's the stuff everybody's doing right now? You want to go to this, whoops. You want to go to this month in Copy Chief right here. This is what Mary and Mike did to help us all find stuff better. It's brilliant. So. This is everything that's going on. Um, this shouldn't be here. <laughs> Why is uh, this not sell tickets to Copy Chief Live right now? Because uh, too much uncertainty. But um, uh, training, so the training replays will always be right here. Um, and the challenge, so here's the new challenge starts now. And based on that training, we're asking you to come in here, plot yourself right here on the timeline. It's the freelancer's journey, where, where are you at? And Beautiful set of questions Rachel put together. What's your current phase? What's your biggest challenge holding you back from reaching the next phase? That's a big, right? That, just thinking about that. Easy to find where you belong on here. Are you phase two? Are you phase three? Phase four? And why, how long you been there? What, you know, you've like, I'm in phase three and I just can't get over the line. Well, what's happening and what actions uh, have you taken recently to move your business forward? What can you stop focus on, focusing on right now? It's a big one. That's not helping you get to the next phase. And how can I adjust my previous plan based on recent events? So, and then the single most important thing you can focus on. So it's just a way to get super clear on what you should be doing to, to grow your business and move forward. If you've been stuck and mired in a certain situation on this journey, RFL, and our other programs are all about getting you further down the line because things get better and better and better and better at every phase of this, of this business. If, if you have a plan and know what to look for. I, so that's that. Um, and I want to uh, remind you, if you're a freelancer and you're looking for gigs, to be sure to add your profile to this because we updated the job alert section and uh, this is just another way for um, our members uh, and business owners who are looking to hire copywriters to come in here and just learn a little bit about you. Here's Darren. The uh, reason I said, what year did you start writing copy is because I didn't want to say how long, because obviously that would change every year, right? Once this, so from, for himself in 2011, for clients in 2014, super clear. Which industries and niches have you written for? Everything from uh, make money online to health supplements and high ticket. All right. So Darren's got a lot of experience over different uh, markets. Um, and I like to say, which ones are, are you not interested in writing for? Let's just get, 
not waste each other's time in that conversation. So SAS and B, B2B doesn't do it for him. Uh, which uh, special trainings and courses inside of Copy Chief have you completed? Um, I would say here, Darren, I would go in and be more specific about this. Just take a minute to think about the ones you've actually completed and list them here because oftentimes other members, uh, and you'll see this all the time in the, um, in, the, in the review section, they're trying to implement a certain thing they learned in Copy Chief, um, one of the trainings to their business. And they know, for instance, if you've been through um, uh, you, you know, Ross, Ross O'Loughlin's USP, um, training, for instance, or the, the Todd Brown, uh, big idea training or whatever, uh, they'll say, oh, cool. Well, that's the thing I'm trying to implement. And I know this member, um, did that. So it's, a, it's, a, it's one way to match, right? So get specific in these, use your resource. Remember, this is all confined in, inside the world of copy chief. So we're all speaking the same language here. So um, get specific. So be sure to go and uh, fill that out. I got a little video for, the video for you on the page here about how to do it. It's like 30 seconds long, super simple. Just telling you what I told you here, essentially. Um, all right, so those are the big things. Mike, did I miss anything? My man, Mike Lucas. Um, let me check the rundown. Do, 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 do. Yep, talked about RFL. Okay, cool. Um, Awesome. Okay, we got a hot seat coming up, by the way. I'm excited about this. Uh, Sharon Langshaw is in the hot seat, and uh, I'm excited to talk with Sharon. I think the, the, the thing she's writing, the, the product she's writing about is super cool and interesting, and I think we can all help her a lot with her, her sales letter. It's one of those where it's, uh, you'll see it's, it's a little hard to, um, it's hard to know how to position it, right? There's, there's a lot to it. It's in, a, it's in a crowded industry in some ways. It's in Australia, by the way. It's in the Australian market. Sharon, are you Australian? Are you, are you up at three or four in the morning to... Um, are you really? Oh, God bless you for, for being up um, awake for this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to dive into your hot seat in just a minute here. 12.30 a.m., um, Oh, Aaron. Yeah. Oh, you're in, where are you in, in, uh, in Asia somewhere? Um, Singapore. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys, man. That means a lot to me that you, that you do that. Um, I know that is not easy. Um, okay, cool. So let me put a panel together. Um, sorry, Mike. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. April monthly uh, workshop. Woo, we got so much going on in copy chief. This last thing I'll, I'll tell you about it and then we'll, we'll jump into Sharon's hot seat. Um, and maybe I could have someone like Darren and some folks who haven't uh, been on a panel with me for a hot seat before. I'd love to have you guys jump on and, um, and add uh, to the fun. Let me bring on Mike. Uh, you have your hand raised. So to me, that means you want it. You're ready to come on camera. That's what it's about to me, Mike Lucas. Uh, I hope you're not bald today. So oh, bald again. Yes. Yeah. so weird when you... I, uh, I shaved my head right before I got on the air. Sorry. But well, you normally have a beautiful full head of hair. You don't have to do this for us. I, to... I, I, the wig is, I mean, there's a, uh, a shelf with the wig on it right behind me. So be careful what you wish for. I just, I love you as you are. I just want you to know this doesn't make me feel closer to you. Okay. Okay. Um, I, uh, I only raised my hand so, I, I, so you would see my comment about the April. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> And then I saw that you said, oh, I'm going to bring him on. And so um, I, I instantly threw on clothes. I, um, you did a good job. You look, you look pretty, pretty we, lucid. I, we, I had like nine people in here. Like we were having a, what, what we like to call a hug party. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Private we hug party? party. Yeah. Is, so that like the, um, is that like a, what was it in the 60s when everybody got blackballed? They're having like Nazi meetings or whatever. That's what it is. It's like, it's like secret society of, of huggers. Like, right, I don't we, care. We, um, I can't we, take We it. hug and cough. That's what we do. We look at each other and we just, ah, and then we just, oh, freedom. <laughs> Screw you, coronavirus. No, That's we funny. Um, Let's talk about the, the monthly mini workshop because you're one of the people along with Laura Fry who helps create these. Yeah, Laura does a lot of work on these. Yeah, um, she's the great, great. Laura Fly. Uh, Laura this Fly. one, Laura Ed Fly. Pretty cool. Um, a lot of things that we're talking about with RFL. Uh, one of the keys, I think, uh, uh, you know, just based on on your teachings, there is about specializing. And um, 
one of the ways to specialize you teach is about getting your bat signal talent the one thing you like to do that you're great at that you can begin to pitch and build your authority around and people who are taking the uh the program will understand that way uh deeper uh, right. with the classes towards it but in this challenge um we're gonna give sort of like a quick version of that to where people begin to identify their bat signal talent and then one way to get uh people to begin to be, uh, enter your world around the bat signal talent is to have a lead magnet, something That's that right. you attract uh, uh, attention uh, or uh, um, your authority towards. Uh, exactly, in, in, like, like a 60-second like a exactly, yeah. sales. So yeah. This is a lead magnet turned into a book, um, which makes it hilarious when your mother-in-law buys four of them and asks you to sign them for her friends. And you're like, I'm oh. signing a lead magnet to right. Ethel who will never... Um, be a member of Copy Chief, but I, and it's, it's awkward to have to write that all out before you sign it. Like you put that it in the is. Page. Just, just so you know, like a short apology. <laughs> I know it's very short. It's a short book. I get it. Don't say that at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so a lead magnet is key, and again, a great uh, if you're if you are a freelancer and you're ready to step out and have and attract your own audience and start building a list of, of peers and prospects. Uh, really important to have both people understanding what you do, what is that bat signal, uh, they should shine, um, then you're going to need a lead magnet. But to keep it super simple and fun, all we're asking you to do is define your bat signal uh, based on the training we just had, uh, use the matrix, see what you come up with, and then give three potential titles for your lead magnet. I'm just going to talk a little bit about here's what my lead magnet would be, and here's what I would uh, maybe call it. And then in the mini workshops, uh, you guys just coach each other. All the members step in and um, super helpful, super cool. I know Rachel Kraft is sort of our, our um, uh, I always want to use a condescending term, like, is, is it, you know, because she's female, if I call her the queen of lead magnets. I don't know. Does that feel Zara. Right? I think Zara is uh, Zara? asexual. Yeah, Zara can be either a, a, a man or what you can identify as oh, okay. like a cat. I like that. It's, it's Yeah, so Zara would be... Um, Zara, Zara uh, the lead you, magnet. Well, that with a, with a T, not not a C. That, that, that'd be key. Otherwise, otherwise none of this counts. She likes queen. Okay, so... She, she likes queen, queen now. Well, you know what? There you go. She's like, I like queen. All right, so queen of lead magnets. Yeah. So anyway, I know she is um, excited to help people because she lives and breathes this stuff. So anyway, it'll just be cool to be, and again, the point here is best case scenario, you watch that uh, free training or the, the, you know, the, the member training, you get enough from there to come up with a back signal and then you do, and then through this challenge, you go, oh, I'm gonna, this is what I would call it. And then you just turn around and you make the, the thing. And now, and you launch it and you're, and you're building a list. That's great. Like that would be thrilling to me, but at the very least, I just want to get your thoughts turning on, damn it, I am an expert. When you do the bat signal matrix, that alone, Mike, it's, yeah. it's a way to impress yourself. And I say, take a moment to appreciate all the work you've done, all the, the, the uh, effort you've put towards to becoming an expert. And yep. uh, you know, what I think is interesting is when you began, uh, you really never gave much credence to your comedy expertise. Yeah even that whole history. And then I think you said Carlton finally said, Carlton, exactly. that's the most interesting thing about you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I've been hanging out with you. And, uh, right? <laughs> really but just a comedy it, thing. And when you fill out that matrix, it really forces you to go, what have I done? What am I interested in? Uh, where, where have I dipped my toe and, and, and toes in? And, and then you realize, wow, I, I know a lot more about American history than I thought I did. And I'm really interested in that. And then you begin to, you know, uh, head towards those niches. And so, yeah, yeah, it, it includes like your your what I say your your bizarre hobbies, your yeah. stra your strange interests. You know, look, we're we're creative people. We're, we we we're high fact finders. We like a lot of information. Yeah. Everything you've put energy towards knowing is belongs somewhere on that list. And sometimes it's it's just good to have it in front of you. Remember, I am uniquely qualified for that gig uh, because of this and that. And so. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Mike, thank you um, yeah. for all you do in here. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you stop by the freelancers only section and check out the Mike check. Mike's great articles about. Oh, yes. Those are super yes. fun. We're trying to use humor to uh, sort of go over some of the um, so, trials and tribulations. The, well, yeah, of, 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 yeah, of, of uh, freelancing. And so um, there is a lot of humor. It's, it's, a, it's kind of funny when you're a unique uh, uh, person, 
you know, most people who are freelancers are unique people because they have the guts to sort of say, I'm not going to do it the way everyone else does it. And right now it's like you were saying, it's, it's proven to be a, whew, I, I was just telling my wife, I was like, boy, if I was still a, like a, a comic right now, I, I don't know what I'd be oh, doing. Man. I'd be really sweating it out. But then, you know, being a freelancer, it's just shifted yeah. everything. So the idea is to, to use humor to help people uh, sort of get acclimated into the um, and, and move over the speed bumps of, of yeah. starting your freelancing business. So. Dude, you were not only a comic, you were a comic on cruise ships. <laughs> But at the end, yeah, that's when I knew what to retire. I always said when I was um, young and um, hungry, I said, once I get on those ships, man, I, 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 it's a countdown until retirement. <laughs> and sure enough, within, within like, like three and a half, four years. But it's like they're golden handcuffs. You know, you're making a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Surely you could use that gig if you're a writer and you, you, know, you, all, you spend all day. You could, you could do two jobs if you want to. But you're trapped yeah. inside of a ship with, with – and now, now it's a nightmare given everything that's happening. Right. But back then it was. Uh, but imagine there's a lot of lot of good comics, and that's their bread and butter. Yeah, uh, Al yeah Robins it's really hurting. Yeah, it's, it's lives, uh, it's lives on those ships, and God yeah. knows when that when that'll happen again. So uh, yeah, who knows how? It's oh, oh, sorry, Mike. Accident. <laughs> I just um, I just bumped you by accident. Sorry about that. I, my trackpad is very sensitive. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that was Mike Lucas. And uh, I'm thrilled that Mike has become a freelancer, like I did, you know, moved from comedy uh, to, and Mike uh, had a lot of success, was on The Tonight Show twice, uh, was a great, great, great comic and improviser. And, but now, gets to control his life, works from home, is a freelancer, doesn't have to travel. Um, it's great stuff. So, um, all right, let's get into Sharon's hot seat. So I'm gonna bring you on first, Sharon. Thank you again for uh, making time in the middle of the night there in Oz to be with us. And then I'm going to invite some people to come on and help me. Um, less, more of a review than a critique. We're, we're here to help uh, Sharon uh, you know, position this, this offer. Um, I'm sure Sharon has some very specific. Uh, could somebody uh, link the um, Sharon's thread? It's up. Uh, ba -ba -ba. That'd be super helpful. Hi, Sharon. Can I can't hear or see you yet? So, oh. oh, there you are. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's nice to see you. Thanks for um, being up with us. Yes, it was very exciting. <laughs> You're a trooper. Uh, what time is it? Three in the morning there. 2.43. 2.43. Okay, we'll try to get you to bed by 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is cool. I had a look at your copy, and I was able to watch the video from Trudy, who is the, the expert behind this, this offer. Yep. And I, I really love that. And I already left you a few notes. Um, uh, I'm going to bring on a couple folks to help us, too, because uh, can't, uh, nobody writes alone, as we say. Could I get, would Darren Hanzer be willing to come on and uh, give us his thoughts? Um, Darren is a, um, I'm put him on the spot, a super good, experienced, high level, high level copywriter. And it looks like he just ran for the hills. Oh no, he raised his hand. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool, let's get Darren on. And let's get, um, um, uh, anybody else feel like so this is um <clears throat> i want to call it biz up um essentially it is a business opportunity sharon right and so if you've done any work in biz up understand these kinds of offers this is in the australian market um if you happen to be i know if you're australian probably not here live with us and i did tag some people in the thread to help us um there's josh white and i see and darren darren did you get the invite to come on I clicked you and then I'm not uh, seeing you. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh, there's Darren. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Oh, you're in the car and you're going to do it anyway. I appreciate that, Darren. Awesome, brother. Hello. Yeah, we, we hear you, man. Good to see you. You can hear me? Okay. Hold yeah. on a second. I got to make sure that I can hear you. Okay. And check one, two, oh, check yeah. one, two. Hey, uh, hey, it's Kev here. Hold on. I'm on my phone. Okay, I got cool. out of the house for a minute, so. <laughs> nice. Taking a little break in the car. I've done that a few uh, times. Hold on, I'm going to fix this. 
Okay, cool. I'll let you work on that. I'll mute you in the meantime. Joshua, how are you, my friend? Good. How are you? Good. Great to see you. Say hello to Sharon. Sharon, hello. I just spoke with somebody uh, totally different, but I've been speaking with people all over the world this week. I had uh, a client in Poland earlier. I uh, just got the phone with a guy in the UK, and uh, I actually have a client right now in Australia as well. So um, I'm accustomed to the uh, the time zone changes and, and time converter. And so thank you for being uh, up tonight. And I promise that Darren and I and Kevin will, uh, will attempt to make this worth it for you. Thank you. Cool. Darren, can you hear us? Hear me? Yep, I just unmuted you. We got you. Cool. This is, Thank this is my escape outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the run. From yeah, we all me. look like we're, we're, now. Now you're supposed to dress like you're going to rob a bank. That's the funny thing about all this to me. <laughs> Can you imagine two months ago if you just walked around with a mask all the time, people would be like, gonna, somebody, "Somebody report got, that guy." It's like I'm, uh, I'm dealing in the in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got this one. I got Ooh. some of this. If you need. Yeah. Oh, there you got the N95s. Look at you, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, got I, the ordered, good stuff. I ordered some the, the cotton ones, and it took them like three weeks to come. They just came yesterday. And then, and then we've, we, we got some buffs, you know, the bandanas and stuff. My son loves those. He tries to look like a ninja. And then <laughs> before he walks around the neighborhood in a hoodie, I'm like, you're pushing the limits of this, man, but okay. <laughs> so, all right, cool. So, Sharon. Uh, again, I, I love this offer, um, and I told you why. I was just you tell us for everybody for the future who watches this, for Darren and, jo and Joshua who may not have had as, a chance like I did to see it. What's this about? Who's it for? And how are they hearing about it? Okay, so first off, um, coronavirus came along at the end of the grant money that we um, were working on, and so the. Uh, federal government in Australia provides one lot of people, uh, but we still run ads, Google ads to find those. Um, but this is now going to be opened up to other people, but we seem to be quite attractive and the, all the research plays out that we um, over 50s market. So I tapped, I, I did a lot of research in the beginning of the program and spoke to lots of people. And because I um, have the ask method under my belt, uh, my yeah. head, I was able to tap into those things. So um, lots of pain around being over 50, unemployed, put out to pasture, that kind of thing. Or you're facing um, unemployment, long-term unemployment. So particularly um, men and women. Yeah. And um, talk about the origin of this program. To me, that's the most interesting part. Yeah, so Trudy was, she actually was like a CIO of a government department in New Zealand and uh, just got sick of the grind and the corporateiness and governmentness of it all and decided to start her own business. And she somehow started working with Vision Australia. And the first guy was writing a blog about antiques and he had vision problems. And so she helped him monetize that blog. And he still makes money for his family and so on um, using that blog. And so that's where it stemmed in 2016 with vision impaired people taking them online. Isn't that cool guys? So it's like a, a solution for vision impaired folks who are part of an organization in Australia. And they said, hmm, you know, how do we make it so this person can have an online business despite vision problems and limitations. Mm -hmm. And then now they realize well, this can work for a lot of other people and folks over 50 who are in Australia are feeling squeezed out of the workplace, unappreciated, unwanted, now can start an online business using the same method. Yeah, and carers too. They're a special group, people who look after people who have a disability or age. Yes. Yeah. So, is it, so this product is it's teaching people how to start an online business that just stems from that original need? Is that the, is that the idea? Uh, correct, yes. The Australian government started because they wanted to try and stop that that ha that happening with this age bias that seems to be happening in our country and also people who can't work um, full-time because they may have a child with a disability or, a, you know, looking after an elderly parent or yeah. something like that. And just to be clear, Sharon, is this funded by the government in any way or... or 
you need to be a part of an organization or qualify yeah. in a certain way to get access to this. No, this is just, this is where it was born and now we're making it available to anyone who wants it. Essentially. Taking it on the road, so to speak. So, yeah. uh, and the government one will continue, but we'll, we'll segment them off on another funnel. Yep. Okay. To, so, to, yep. Um, so where, where are people coming from? How are they finding this offer? Oh, um, I think that for this offer, we're, um, and I'll write another request in Copy Chief, but uh, I wanted to go to Facebook ads this time because everybody's on Facebook, as well as um, the Google ads are really dialed in now, like really like tight and um, tight kickers are gone and really super so, sweet. Okay, so, so you say you, you have some success with Google ads from the blog that's about... In, the, in, in what context does the blog frame this offer specifically? Like how, how broad of the, is the content there? Um, they tapped into just using um, uh, keywords and specific terms around job seeker. And there's a program called Nice in Australia, which is funding to start a business. And okay. uh, so the new ads, I haven't done those yet. So when people come to that blog, though, they're, it's a good match. They're very interested in this topic. They're, they're coming there to learn more. They're thinking yes. about starting an online business. Okay, cool. And then they, it goes through an eligibility um, funnel. Eligibility. And again, that's not, they can't be discounted. Is it more of an application or more, almost more like a quiz where it's like, let's help you start getting granular about how you would do this? It, yeah. they can't be they can't really be disqualified right no not anymore no not anymore okay cool so i'll give you guys my big note and then i'll let you guys take it over <laughs> the thing i saw and again you guys haven't probably had the opportunity like i did to watch the video with trudy but it's it's quite good because trudy is super legit she looks exactly to me fits the profile of somebody who would be running a program like this there she is, um, you know, uh, she's the director, West Island Digital Online Business Liftoff, you know, she, and she's just talking very matter of factly about the history of this program. And there's no hype, there's no, you know, it just feels it's very legit. And so to me, I think that's the lead. I think we're burying the lead by not saying the, a, a program created to help vision impaired Australians, um, you know, create, a, 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 you know, um, an offer online, create a business, an online business that has helped them do X, X, and X is now available to the public. To me, like that's, if I read that, I'm like, oh man, great. Like, you know, it's proven, it's legit. It's, it's you know, they, you can't be a crappy biz op uh, fake out company if you're only one, uh, you know, sheet removed from a government program, or at least it, and then on that note, Sharon, I would make sure you use like all kinds of transparency, like make it super easy for people to check out your company. Because if mm -hmm. you're gonna take my advice and, and use that kind of credibility, that lead up front, make it super easy for them to check you out because the, we know people do that with scams all the time, right? So you have mm -hmm. danger there. But if you go out of your way to go, hey man, do your homework. Don't, get, don't go down a bad road here. We're legit, go check it out. This is how you can, third party verify us or, or do it on your own. Don't just take our word for it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's my big thought. Um, Darren, Josh. What? Yeah. I have, I have one, one main thing that I, that I saw. I, I have, I, this is the, literally the first time I'm yeah. seeing this. So um, I might be missing something that's kind of obvious, but um, if you scroll down to like where the actual page starts, I would, like, do you have a bunch of stories of people that um, were kind of in situations that seemed like they could never start an online business? They started one, they're actually earning like a little bit of money, you know, something that um, can stimulate something that, um, like the story of your, of your uh, creation, if you can interweave some testimonials that tell that story as well as like at the same time telling like a, a before and after story, um, I think yeah, it could, it would capture like, do you remember those like 
remember those old ClickBank um, offers, like the guy in the street, and he would go yes. up to, you know, he'd go up to like the, the pretty girl and he'd go in a coffee shop and he'd have her do a couple things and right. she'd make 50 bucks, right? And, you know, they did a lot of man in the street stuff with Agora. So I think that type of thing where it's more mm. like living room, like use her. Yeah. But it's like, here, like, let's take someone who just got told that they're being laid off because of this downturn. And let's see if we can, like, replace their stimulus check or you know, let's right. see if we can create their own um, stimulus for themselves that is not required, you know, something like that, where um, there's a lot of like emotion there, but as well as like a success that someone can see, and then it can bridge to like, like now it's being availed. This was never available to anyone else. We created this right. with, a, with a need that we had. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, we realize we could be helping so many more people. I think the creation story can be weaved a little bit into like making people believe like, oh my God, like this is, I could do this. Like I'm at home, like these people are blind, right? And I think that yeah. Yeah. that kind of like thought is, is pretty compelling. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's That's super, and and it's, I, yeah. I love that, yeah, it, it, it's a really proven thing. And again, I bet in Australia that they didn't see that, it, like we did here in the market <laughs> quite as much. It's not, it, it's not, I don't think it really got played out here in a way, in a sense, except maybe in that, particular niche right but it's it's always an effective thing if you can prove it in fact we did one with anthony robbins uh not anthony robbins, anthony uh, morrison darren where where we created this whole thing where he flew got on his private jet and flew to three people's houses sat down with them in their living room and yes. yeah we, we we wrote that um ben and i wrote that and uh so so sharon this darren's exactly right that would i mean best case scenario you literally do that like you're starting to loosen up, I think, a little in Australia, and maybe you could actually sit down with some people, bring them through this process, and 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 you know, you, you sit down, you talk to them about it, you sh and now you're you're sort of like handling the objections and 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 getting all the questions that your prospect's going to have, and you go, you give them their homework, and you go, we're going to check in with you next week and see how you did. Yeah, they have to do it themselves, right? They you have know, like, to do it themselves, right? Like you're not allowed to like help them they got to do it on their own computer you go into their house or something and you say look where do you work right and they, they literally take you to their old computer that you know thing and you show them how to do it and it's like that that kind of thing is i don't know super compelling okay that's a great idea darren like great great tip yeah so and sharon and and then the the, the minimum viable version of that would be weave those stories into the copy is what Darren's saying also it's like it's cool to have the testimonials and the quotes but mm -hmm. write those stories into the copy so whenever okay. you go to talk about a benefit or something you go you know it in and it's and it's like what happened with 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 Todd and and he was in the situation you just three two three paragraphs of their story and then you're right back into the next point yeah, there's one guy that replaced his income and just signed his 22nd client and his goal was 20 by within the first year and he only started in, I think, September. So I'm going to feature him and ring him today, or to, you know, Monday. Fantastic. Cool. Joshua? Yeah. Yeah, you know, Sharon, that might be a, a good lead story. You know, anytime that you can create that uh, contrast early on, you know, I've got a, uh, I've got a promo right now with a guy. He was a broker in uh, New England area. He was literally bankrupt and had this major fi uh, family tragedy happen with his kids. Um, and then he ended up, uh, you know, buying this thing and the magic button solution, and he became a billion dollar real estate producer. And so yeah. the headline is something like, you know, uh, bankrupt broker, um, you know, becomes whatever it was, becomes billion dollar realtor, you know? And so anything can like that dramatic, uh, contrast, you know, the, uh, the, the, the underdog, the, um, you know, David versus Goliath and it came out on top and not only did he replace his income, but he, you know, he three X did and, you know, the wolf was at the door and, you know, he, he was on his last, you know, couple of pennies or whatever. And, and, you know, any, anytime you can do like, you know, something like that, I call it a reverse feature pace where you just describe, you know, the exact pain, like, they're worried how they're going to provide food. You know, kids got, you know, tuition at their private school or whatever the case is. I don't know what the deal is, but, you know, just kind of really, really, really getting in their head and their shoes as to like what those financial struggles look like right now for them. 
with that, I know in Australia, you guys have the super annuization or annuation or whatever it's called. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of angst with that right now, right? Because mm -hmm. the government actually does a part of managing those retirement funds for you and that's mandatory. And yeah. uh, a lot of people, because of the current economic condition, they're, they're kind of bothered by that. Is that right? Um, yeah, and they have, they're able to access that super early, which is a problem if you're 40 and then going to retire in 20 years, you're taking already out. So, yeah. Exactly. So there, there may or may not be a hook, you know, it maybe as an alternative way uh, to lead that, um, you know, a, a hook going that route, because now everybody, a lot of people, they're looking for money. They're looking for how to get paid. And so if you can show them a way that, hey, forget the government, they're screwing you anyway. Um, you know, they're, they're going to, they're going to, you know, take your, your retirement from you, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, by the way, here's a solution. You see what I'm saying? And, and the other thing that I've noticed with, with a lot of biz op uh, offers, and this may be just something for you to think through. Anytime you can frame getting paid versus having a business. So I don't know what your audience is, but having a business is work for people. And a lot of biz op buyers, they just want to get paid. Does that make sense? And so th there's a difference there between like getting, do these few things, you know, send some messages, fill out some paperwork, you know, make a few phone calls and get paid versus, hey, go start a business. You have to get stationary, form an LLC. Like that loses people. Now that may be who you want to attract. I don't know. I'm just saying like, that's something to think about. The other thing kind of going along with that is, there's a difference between a side hustle income stream and a startup. Does that make sense? Again, like people don't want to, do, I, I found some people do, if you're in Silicon Valley or whatever, a lot, you know, some people may want the startup, but a lot of people don't want the startup. They want quick, easy money, you know, side income to supplement. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And then uh, like, I know Levesque is a little bit like this, but the whole get paid for your passion, get paid for your knowledge, get paid for your expertise, yeah. uh, you know, get paid for being you, you know, that kind of stuff works. And again, like I don't, the, the other part of that is, you know, if you have a particular niche or type of professional, like if these are, uh, if, if you look at your customer base and, and you look at the people that, you know, you have case studies from, are they coming from like a particular industry? Are, are a lot of them former teachers or a lot of medical? I know you said like the caregiver people, like what, you know, if that's who the majority of your audience is, what story can you tell that is from somebody like them? Does it make yeah. sense as well? You know what I mean? Or if it's like yeah. a lot of, like the mining industry is very popular in Australia, like coal and resources and mining and whatnot. So if there's a lot of those factories that have been shut down and that's your market, how could you show this broke factory guy that got laid off, was able to share his passion for you know, woodworking, and now he's got this online course, and he's replaced his income, and not just replaced it, but he's 5 x it, and mm -hmm. all he does is share about what he's passionate about online, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, obviously, we know there's work involved, we know there's more to it, we know there's some things, but you, you got to kind of have to sell what people want and give them what they need, or at mm -hmm. least sell them in the hook before you kind of let, let them know that they're going to have to do some work, um, okay. but those were, those were kind of the big things that I had without really diving deep into yeah. the copy. Great stuff. Uh, is all this helpful, Sharon? Yes, it's fabulous. Thank you. Cool. Well, we'll have this replay for you so you can go back through the notes. We'll also include the comments because there's been a lot of great suggestions in the comments as well. I know that we're hard to keep up with, but Angie and Carrie and others have been sharing a lot of great stuff in there. So um, thank you, uh, Joshua. Thank you, Darren. Really appreciate that. Live from the, from the car, the solace of your vehicle. And yeah. uh, I hope you don't get arrested like uh, selling those gloves on the black market over there. And, okay. Uh, I know. The police <laughs> are the ones that want it. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> we must take those from you. Uh, Sharon, <laughs> it's it was great meeting you. Thank you for, for putting yourself on the hot seat, helping us all learn and grow together. Please show us the changes you make and in in, in how you implement so we can learn from it as well. And uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on your thread to help you along the way as you need it, okay? So okay. thanks everybody um, for another great chief chat and I'll see you inside the forums and stay safe and uh, hug someone close to you. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye.